Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Second Battle of Winchester, located in Frederick and Winchester County, between Union General Robert H. Milroy and his 7,000 troops from the 2nd Division, 8th Corps, and Confederate General Richard S. Ewell and his 12,500 men from the 2nd Corps, Army of Northern Virginia. This all occurred on June 13th to the 15th, 1863. Brandy Station was the battle that signaled the Confederate command Robert E. Lee's implementation of his second invasion of the North, sending Confederate General Richard Ewell and his Second Corps to cross the Blue Ridge Mountains and blow out the Union forces in the lower Shenandoah Valley. From there, Ewell would turn around towards Maryland and secure supplies for the Confederate Army. Unfortunately for Ewell, before he could reach Maryland, he came across Union Major General Robert Milroy and his 7,000 troops garrisoned at Winchester. Not wasting time, Ewell split his forces into two groups. The first was to attack Winchester under the command of Confederate General Edward Allegheny Johnson and General Jubal A. Early. Meanwhile, the remaining force was sent to Martinsburg to go after the B&O Railroad and cut off Milroy's possible retreat. Due to his preparation for the oncoming Confederates, Milroy posted his scouts and pickets too close to the city of Winchester. He did this because his troops were getting ambushed by Confederates, but by moving the pickets closer, he had no idea where the Confederate location or how many they were. While this happened, the Confederates were able to secure Martinsburg, successfully cutting off Milroy. On June 13th, the battle started with Allegheny Johnson moving his division onto Front Royal Pike, driving the Union troops back up the Opaquan River, crossing at Parkins Mill Battery. This was early in the morning and resulted in cavalry skirmishes. Johnson was stopped, however, by Milroy's artillery. While he did stop, Johnson kept the area he had taken and awaited Drubal Early's arrival. While this happened, Drubal moved up the Valley Pike and began attacking Union Light Infantry at Kernstown, successfully pushing the Union troops out of Kernstown and north to Abrams Creek by that evening. While the Confederates pushed, Milroy moved his men into the forts. With no knowledge of how the Confederates were arrayed against him, he decided the best option was to secure themselves in forts and wait for the attack. While Milroy was doing this, Union Commander General-in-Chief Henry W. Halleck asked General Schenck to order Milroy to retreat out of Winchester. However, Schenck never directly ordered Milroy to retreat, rather instead leaving it up to Milroy. This will be a problem for everyone later. The heaviest fighting was on June 14th and comprised of four main aspects. First, at dawn, Gordon's Brigade, a Confederate unit under Jubal Early's command, captured Bowers Hill, while the remaining three brigades kept out of sight of the Union troops. By mid-afternoon, Early was able to gain position opposite of the West Fort and Union troops inside. The artillery from Early's new position and Bowers Hill that was secured earlier started an artillery fight between the two sides. By that evening, Confederate General Early had taken West Fort and began the artillery assault on Milfoy's forces in Winchester. By June 15th, Confederate General Edward Allegheny Johnson's forward skirmishers had contact with Milroy's retreating column. Milroy responded by turning his men to fight his way out. Johnson moved the rest of his troops into position and began repeated waves of attacks. Eventually, the Union broke and Milroy's horse was even shot out from under him. Eventually, Milroy got back to Union lines and was arrested. Initial investigations were focused on blaming Milroy and why he didn't retreat. He was eventually exonerated. However, he was never given another command again. In a letter to Milroy by President Lincoln, Lincoln told the shamed general, and I quote, Major General Milroy, I have never doubted your courage and devotion to the cause, but I have scarcely seen anything from you at any time that did not contain imputations against your superiors and a chafing against acting the part they have assigned you. You have constantly urged the idea where you were persecuted because you did not come from West Point, and you repeat it in these letters. This, my dear General, is, I fear the rock on which you have split. Abraham Lincoln, 29th of June, 1863. By the end of the battle, the Union had lost a total of 4,443 troops. This comprised of 95 killed, including 7 officers and 88 enlisted, 348 wounded, including 12 officers and 336 enlisted, 4,000 missing or captured, including 144 officers and 3,856 enlisted. This also included 23 rifled artillery pieces, 300 loaded wagons, and more than 300 horses. Meanwhile, the Confederates lost 269 troops. This comprised of 47 killed, 219 wounded, and 3 missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.